What is going on guys? Welcome to Greg Ols TV. This is the Umadigi Bison X10. This is like $200 cell phone. It's crazy inexpensive, but it's got a ton of features. Um, so before we go into the unboxing and go through all the phones, let me show you this little screenshot from their website. It shows you that it's IP68 and 69K, military standard 810G, 6.53 inch, 720 plus, screen 6150 milliamp battery this two independent customizable buttons it's got a built-in fm radio where you don't even need to plug in a headset for it a mediatek helio p60 processor it's got uh, dual microphones side uh, fingerprint sensor android 11 and it's like basic android 11 you don't get any you know crapware really on this nfc google pay barometer and e-compass and so much more guys 6150 milliamp battery it's huge and uh it's definitely big in your hand as well. You can see just taking a quick look at the phone. Before we do that, let's jump into the unboxing of this. And inside the box, you get a charger, you get a cable, pretty simple with a little booklet on how to use the phone. And like I said, this phone is like 200 bucks or something. It's really inexpensive, but when you look at it, it doesn't look like it or feel like it all. It's very hefty. It's very well built. You gotta love the design on here. Uh, the camera setup right there. You get a bunch of cameras on the back. You get a headphone jack, USB-C charging, buttons on the right and the left. You get your volume buttons. You get your fingerprint sensor that also acts as a power button. You have your customizable button on here. You got another customizable button over here. You got your little part over here where you can add in a uh, micro SD card and also your SIM card. And what's cool is you don't need anything to pop it out. I love that. I think this is the first, one of the first phones I've ever realized that you didn't have to, you can just pull it out with your finger. How awesome is that? We don't need that ejector tool. So this has a lot going for it. It's pretty freaking crazy. Um, uh, what I want to tell, let's talk about the fingerprint sensor first. You can see I already set it up. It works pretty good. It's not that bad actually. Uh, with unlocking the phone, you can see it's very, pretty accurate, pretty fast. Overall, pretty happy with it in general. Next would be the ability to just look at the software here. So you see it's got the Google feed over here. Very nice. This only has four gigs of RAM too, so keep that in mind. It's not gonna be, this isn't like a powerhouse spec'd out phone. You swipe up, you got your Google feed. You press and hold here, you got your home screen settings. And by default, it's set up like a, an iPhone, so like it's set up with just home screens so that when you can't swipe up and you just have home screens like you do with an iPhone. I don't like that. One of the reasons I love Android is having that launcher. So I immediately came in here and set it to that I have a launcher. You can also turn off that Google feed that I showed you earlier. Uh, pretty simple home settings. Swiping down, here's your feed for your quick toggles. Very simple, very just plain Android. Not a lot of customizations. When you go into settings though, that's where the magic happens. That's where you can come in here, you can set up your smart keys and change them what they do. For a single tap, you can have it be like an open underwater type thing, or you can have it start recording audio, it looks like. You can do a screenshot if you double click it, and that's the one at the bottom here, and I'll show you that in a second. If I press and hold it, my flashlight turns on. And again, you can kind of have these do pretty much anything that you want on here. Uh, depending upon whatever you're trying to do, which is kind of cool. You can have it open up an application like Chrome, SOS, or you know whatever else you wanted. Let's open, have it open up an application though. Let's have it go open up my phone. So I'm gonna show you. When I press and hold it, I have it set up so my flashlight comes on. Press and hold it again, it'll turn my flashlight off. Press it once, it opens up uh, my sound recorder. Double press it, let's just go home. Double press it, takes a screenshot, and then you can have your one over here do different things as well. Press and hold it, brings up my search, you go into my phone number, double press it, has it go into a website, Chrome, and then press it once, takes a screenshot. You, know, you can again set those to pretty much anything you want, like I said. Buttons work great. The feel of this is crazy good. You've got these rubber, um, edges over here that totally protect it. It makes it feel like you already have a case on, even though you don't. So tons of protection, feels so solid in your your, your hand, and it is pretty heavy for the most part. Um, this is not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination. So 
don't think it is. I ran a Geekbench on here and it had pretty low numbers. It had a single core score of 292 and a multi-score of 1315. So pretty freaking low at that. You got a camera on here. You got a bunch of cameras. You got one on the front there and then you got a couple few on the back. <clears throat> I took some uh, photos and videos, nothing too crazy, but just to give you an idea what it looks like, let's jump into, but actually before we jump into that, I'll show you the features of here. You got your beauty mode, you got your picture mode, portrait mode, extras, which you can do night photos, panorama and pro. So you can take over your complete control of your phone. So let's check out those samples now. Here's a little front camera video with this uh, phone, the Oma Digi, I forget what the name of it is now, but whatever, you know what the name is, it's on the title and stuff. But yeah, this is what it looks like and sounds like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The screen's only 720p, but I gotta admit, it looks pretty good. Um, you can see it from, it, from, the, from an edge. It does get a little dark when you look at it from the edge, but generally it's not too bad. Um, the, vol the, the, the brightness is all the way up pretty much at this point and it's still kind of dark. So if you need a nice bright display, you probably don't want to look this way, but I mean, this, this phone is super inexpensive and you get battery life for days, 6150 milliamp battery. It's ridiculously uh, big. Speaking of uh, performance on here, it's, it's okay. It's, you know, you're not going to be like, wow, this is amazing. This is really fast. It's gonna get the job done for the most part. Um, I think you'll be pretty, pretty happy with it for the most part uh, if you're just doing basic tasks on here. And we'll show some gaming on here as well in just a moment. But just so you can see loading up Twitter. There's a little bit of lag, a little bit of resistance, but I mean, when, you, when you're paying a thousand bucks, you expect that, but you know, for a couple hundred bucks, you know, this isn't actually that bad, especially with a nice clean interface on there. I did, we do have a game on here, a little snake game. My son absolutely loves this game. I think it's called Snake Rivals. And uh, we'll get this going, I'm gonna turn the volume down. Just to show you how it runs and you can see how it loads. Um, this loads pretty fast on my Galaxy Z Fold 3 and on my son's Tab S6. And it plays pretty well, pretty good on there too. Uh, this is an online game and basically the way it works is you're just trying to eat as many apples as you can to get as big as you can so that you can destroy the other snakes that are in the game. You can see a little lag right there, but generally it runs fairly decent. Oh, he's gonna try to get me. And I'm gonna, if I stay in this game too long, I won't bother with it. Ooh, I don't know if I can eat him. I don't even know this game though. My son loves this game. Snake Rivals, like I said. But like they see that guy, if I ran into that guy, I'll die. But if he runs into me, he'll die actually. Oh, I'm saying I have a bad connection in here, which they were having some server issues yeah, this whole weekend. My son was so bummed out. But you can see it runs pretty good for just like a basic type graphics game. You know, if you want to play those type of games like this, it seems to be running fairly decent I'll just uh, I'll die and I'll show you well I want to see I'm curious to see what what um, graphics it's running at I don't want to continue let's see I got a bunch of things in here bam 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 let's hit okay to that let's quit let's go into settings uh, it's playing on high graphics so that's pretty good next let's jump into the the bell jump back into the screen and, and um, and the uh, sound of this. So I'm going to load up a YouTube. Got my YouTube here. McGregor's TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. We have three tech news stories and a couple of questions. Kind of light on the question. So if you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. With the word question, Let's see if it can play 2160. Let's jump into the tech news. Our first story of the day is about the Pixel 6a. Now, remember, we talked about the Pixel 6a yesterday. We showed it off. There's two things I want to mention. And show so it looks like it struggles Pixel with 2160 Pro. content, which doesn't surprise me at all, especially with the benchmark score it had. Um, 
Let's, first question of the day comes from let's see if it catches up again. But I do have to say that this actually works pretty good as a... The screen looks pretty good. Like I said, it doesn't get very bright. But the quality of the display, man, this is just nothing but graphics on here. Let me go back to it. Guys, welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source. For yeah, it's struggling with the two, 4K. Let's go back into here. Let's set it at 1080 60. Go back. And also, yeah, it plays 1080 60 fine, which you would expect. So, screen looks good. Um, sound is just okay. It sounds a little muffled. It doesn't sound that powerful either. It's not that loud. Uh, but overall, with the, the price you're getting, it's pretty fantastic. One thing I did want to show you, because we were looking at some of the apps that have come pre-installed on this. There's not a, pre, a lot of pre-installed apps. I only installed a few apps on here. So I'm pretty happy with the apps that are installed here. Uh, being not that many. Like I told you, it's FM radio. So I can come on here. So please, uh, audio find there. I'm just going to stop that because I don't want to get copyright. Um, that's awesome. I love that it can play the radio without even having a um, set of headphones. Sometimes you got to set the headphones on there. It's pretty cool that it doesn't have that. If you're looking for like a backup phone just to get some stuff done or you want to go on a, if you're going traveling in a place that's not so safe and you want a smartphone that's going to get the job done, this is great. I mean, it's not that bad at all. I'm fairly happy with this you know for the most part it's like dude it's pretty pretty good um let's load up android police's website here you see it loaded that up pretty darn good the colors are nice on here the display even though it's 720p is not that bad um the brightness you know something to be desired i was turning the screen the thing black because my theme is black but overall not bad you know like if you look it's not the best phone but uh for the price and the, the feeling of this and the battery life you're going to get, it, I would go for it if you're, if you're looking for a, a first-time cell phone for yourself or a, a, a smartphone for your family. This isn't a bad idea. This will not go 5G either. It's a Ford uh, LTE phone, so keep that in mind as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road. Peace.